Hey folks, it's Pat. Welcome back. Um, I got a question from a student regarding a chapter 3 problem that's pretty common, and that's uh, Chebyshev's theorem and the empirical rule. Now, this is the only place in the class where you're going to see Chebyshev's theorem, so um, I created a calculator that will actually help you through this. But there are two different types of problems here, and that's what makes this one a little bit tricky. So, for example, we have um, not just this, which is according to Chebyshev's theorem, which you're going to use my calculator for, but you also have these problems here that um, are going to use the empirical rule. And so the first thing that I want you to do is whenever you get one of these problems, is take a look. Whenever it says Chebyshev's, you're going to use my calculator, and whenever it says bell-shaped, you're going to use the empirical rule, okay? And the empirical rule problems are actually easier than the Chebyshev problems. Now, with the Chebyshev problems, you can use the calculator um, that I provided in Module 1. Uh, it's in the folder there. It's called Chubby's Calculator. Or you can use the theorem itself. Um, the calculator, the Excel spreadsheet just does the math, all right? So, and there's one problem in here in particular that's kind of a pain to do in the excuse me, in the Alex calculator. So um, that's why I created this calculator for you. So all you're going to do is take a look at the information it gives you and then use the calculator to figure out the information that you're looking for. Okay. And so here's the calculator. It looks like this. All right. And I know you can see this on both screens. I can just see it on one. So I apologize for the dual mouse here, but don't worry about that. All right. So there are four calculators here. There's this one, this one, this one and then um, this one. Sorry, I had that scrolled down there. Okay, so each one of these, it you're going to use the information in the yellow, and so that's stuff that the problem's going to give you, and it's going to spit out what you're looking for in the gray. All right, and so you just have to determine which one of these it's actually telling you to do. All right, so take a look at the problem again. This one right here, according to Chebyshev's theorem, at least 84% of the lifetimes lie between what and what. And so it's giving us the percent between, and of course, in almost all of these problems, it'll give you the mean and the standard deviation up in the text of the problem. Okay, and so you're going to need that for most of the problems in here. Not all of them, but most of them, okay? And so this one, according to Chebyshev's theorem, at least 84% of the lifetime values lie between what and what. So going back over to the calculator here, if we take a look at this, so we just have to look at which one it's actually asking us to use. And so this one, when you have standard deviation, we're looking for the percent. And so this one, we're looking for the percent between. We already have that in this problem, so it's not this calculator. When you don't have standard deviation, well, it gave a standard deviation in the description, so it's not this one. And it says when you have the percent and are looking for the upper and lower, and if we look at our problem back over here, that's exactly what we're looking for. It gives us a percent between, and we're looking for the upper and lower limits. And so the percent between is 84%, so we're going to punch that in. I think I already did this one, or sometimes every now and then you get the same problem twice. And here's our mean, 822. Yep, so you punch that in there. And then 94 is our standard deviation right there. Look at that. I actually got the exact same problem. <laughs> so, and so what it does at this point in time is if you look in these each one of these formulas right here, um, K, this is actually figuring out Chebyshev's theorem using the formula that it gives you in Alex, okay, in order to figure this out. Okay, and so here's my upper and lower, 1057. So I'm going to punch that in there, 1057 and 587 so there we go so those are your uppers and lowers on there now this one here's a little bit different all right so according to chevy theorem at least what percent notice that this is a percent of the lifetimes lie between this and this so in this one it's giving me the upper and lower all right and so i just have to look for the calculator where i have the upper and lower which is this one right here and it's looking for the percent okay so in this one we're gonna have to enter the mean again which is 822 and our standard deviation, which is 94. And it's giving me the upper, which just make sure you get these in the right order, 1010. And the lower, which is 634. Actually, I think you only have to punch in one of these and it'll actually give you the answer right there, which is 75%. And so go ahead and punch that in right here. Now, those are the only things that you need this calculator for. Whenever it says Chebyshev's theorem, use the calculator, all right? Otherwise, just use the Alex calculator for these other ones, okay? So, because the empirical rule basically gives us um, basically a law by which we can live by, <laughs> all right? And so whenever a distribution is, is, is bell-shaped, it's normally distributed, we can just use the empirical rule, all right? Which is much easier than Chebyshev's theorem, and it's a little bit more precise. So the empirical rule is very straightforward on a bell-shaped distribution. 
any uh, given you know value uh, chosen at random, 68% of the time it'll appear within one standard deviation of the mean. Um, 95% of the time it'll appear within two, and 99% it'll appear within three, okay? And so that sounds a little bit complicated, but it, it, this is something that you're going to get a lot of in Alex down the road, so it's kind of important that you get this one, all right? And it starts very basically. So let's say, take a look at this one. Suppose that the distribution is bell-shaped, so we're going to use the empirical rule. It's asking for percent. What percent of the lifetimes lie between 634 and 1010? Well, if we start with our mean, which is 822, let's just go ahead and punch that in the calculator. Let's just add standard deviations until we find one of these two that we're looking for. So our standard deviation here is 94, so let's add 94. 822 plus 94 gives us 916. That's not one of the two we're looking for. So let's just add another standard deviation. So that's another 94. There we go, 1010. So that was two standard deviations away from the mean. Empirical rule, we know that two standard deviations away from the mean is 95%. Okay? Those are easier. <laughs> All right? So as, uh, as soon as you get the hang of it, you realize that the empirical rule looks works a lot of different ways. So like this one, suppose that the distribution is bell-shaped. According to the empirical rule, approximately 68% of the lifetimes are between what and what? Well, we know that 68% is one standard deviation away from the mean, so all you have to do is take our mean, which in this case was 822. Let's add a standard deviation, which is 94, because that's just one standard deviation, 916. So that's our upper limit right there. That's one standard deviation above the mean, 916. And so all we have to do is the exact same thing to find the lower, except for we're just going to subtract it. So 822 minus 94 gives us the lower limit, which is 728. So that's one standard deviation below the mean. Okay, so let's give that a check. And ta -da, we got them all right. <laughs> okay, so anyway, these are pretty straightforward. Oh, in looking at the explanation here, if you don't have access to the Chebyshev calculator, if you're not comfortable using Excel, you can just use the formula right here, all right, to figure out all those. K is just the number of standard deviations away from the mean, and this is for the Chebyshev problems. Um, the calculator is easier, and quite honestly, it does the exact same thing, all right? So most stats calculators would actually do this much, much more easily for you than the Alex calculator does, but that's okay. Don't worry about that too much. That's why we have Microsoft Excel, <laughs> okay? So, and the same thing with the empirical rule. Here it is. Just remember, one standard deviation away from the mean 68%, 2 is 95, and 3 is 99. And so it'll ask you a combination of any different types of problems where it'll either give you K for you know, Chebyshev's theorem or the percent between. Um, and the same thing with the empirical rule. It'll either give you the number of standard deviations away or it'll give you um, the percent that you're looking for between or it'll give you the upper or lower. And so they're all combinations of the same problems, okay? Once you get one or two of them under your belt, okay, the other one should come into the line. And, you know, I mean, again, if you run into one that you just jumped up on, hit the explanation button. If you've done a couple of them right at that point in time, it should make perfect sense to you. So, and if it doesn't, that's okay. Just ping me, let me know, uh, ask any questions you have. And um, I hope this helps, so and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.